What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to manage your materials using Blender 3.0's asset browser. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna set up our material library so we can add our own materials to the Blender asset browser. So as you know, Blender 3.0 added the asset browser function in here, which you can add by clicking the little drop down in any of your windows and selecting the option for asset browser. So in this case, I'm, I'm usually finding that keeping my asset browser on the bottom of the page is working the best for me, but that's gonna vary for everyone. So what that does is that gives us access to our asset library. And so from a material material standpoint, what that does is that allows us to take materials that we have saved into a Blender folder and drop them onto objects inside of Blender. So instead of me having to go copy them from another job or go find any of this, you can see how it's substantially easier to add materials to objects in Blender using this tool. So what I want to do is talk about how to set this up. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to add some additional materials to our library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate Blender file. And I've actually already created the file over here. And what I've done is I've created different kinds of materials in here. So I've got like some car paint material, which is going to have little flecks in it that's going to re reflect light. And you can see how the flecks are kind of affecting that. I've also got some just like simple glossy plastic materials in here that literally are just uh, like a glossy setup. And so what I want to do is I want to set this up so that these show up inside of our asset browser. And so remember that the way that the asset library works or the asset browser works in Blender is you have a folder which you set inside of your preferences. So if you go into your preferences and you look at your file paths, you can see how there's a section in here for setting different folders um, for your asset libraries. So notice for me, I have several different folders in here, but generally speaking, I'm saving my, my assets to the Justin's assets folder. So it's just this location right here. And if we open that up, notice how what it is, is it's basically just a folder with different Blender files saved inside of it. And every time that I open up Blender and I look in the asset browser, it's referencing the folders that I've set in here in order to see what objects are set as assets. So what we wanna do is we've created a separate Blender file with these materials inside of it, right? So I've named them, so they've all got different names, orange car paint, yellow car paint, everything like that. And notice how if you open up your asset browser in the current file section, those assets are going to show up in this list right here. So you can take them and let's say that we had a sphere right here, we'll shade it smooth. I can drag any of those materials onto this object. Once you get this set up, you wanna save this file inside of your assets location. So notice I've already saved this in my Blender assets folder. So if I click on save, right here, and I look in that folder, notice how my paint materials blend file is saved inside of that folder. So that means every time I open up a new Blender file, it's gonna reference this folder for the assets that are contained in here. And so the other thing that you need to make sure to do so that these assets show up is inside, inside of your material properties over here, you wanna make sure that you right click on these and click mark as asset. So let's say for example that you see yellow car paint is on this list. Let's say that I was to clear the asset. Well notice how when I clear the asset, it no longer shows up in the list of materials that are saved inside of this file. But if I was to right click on it and click mark as asset, notice how now that's going to show up in this file. In the same way, let's say that I was to create a new glossy material right here. So I'm just gonna adjust the color, whoops. Let's make sure we make that unique first because it's referencing the old color. But I've created a new one right here. And let's say we wanted like a yellow car paint or a yellow glossy material like this. Well, all I would do is I would just name this paint glossy yellow. And I would right click on it and make sure that I set it as an asset. Well, as soon as I set it as an asset, now if I go back and look in my um, asset browser, notice how my paint glossy yellow is going to show up in here. And so now, if I was to jump over into my original file that we had open, or any new Blender file really, if I was to click the drop down and go into the Justin's asset folder, which is the folder I saved this in, and click on all, notice how those paint materials are going to show up inside of that folder like this. So my orange car paint, my glossy blue paint, all of those are going to show up inside of my folder. So I can now use them in any Blender file. 
And so one thing I wanna do is I wanna organize them. I wanna give them kind of a designation so that I can click in here and find them, right? So like my flooring material, and a lot of these came out of the Blender, um, a lot of these came out of the Blender diorama example file. But what I wanna do is I wanna have my paint show up in this list as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back into this folder and in my current file, in this drop down right here, I wanna click the plus button. What that's gonna do is that's gonna let me create a new catalog. The catalog is basically the way that you're going to manage your materials. In this case, right, for this object right here, I just wanna right click on it and click rename. And I wanna call this car, actually I wanna call it paint dash car like this. Usually I like to put the kind of material before the specificness of it, um, the specificity of it. That way um, all of the paint objects will be together. But then we can just take these materials. So for example, the green car paint, orange car paint. And again, this is why paint should be first because then they'd all be together. But I can take all of those and drag them into the paint car catalog right here. Well now, if I click in here and look at this, inside of the current file, I have these objects for my catalog. And I'm gonna create another catalog right here. And we're gonna call this paint dash glossy right here. Well then, I'm gonna go back into my all and I'm gonna find my glossy paint right here. And I'm gonna drag them into the paint dash glossy. Notice how these have a star on them right here. So that means that we need to save our file. So now if I click on file, save, what that's done is that's added those objects as catalogs inside of the current file. Well, what that means is that means now if I go into my separate Blender file right here and I click on the button to refresh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go find any changes that were made to files inside of that folder. So now if I click on the car paint material right here, Notice how those show up in their own catalog. What that does is that makes it really easy to keep my materials organized. And so this would work exactly the same way for materials that are set up with uh, like different material maps or textures. You would just create them as materials, mark them as assets, and then save that file inside of that folder. And one thing I would say from a personal preference standpoint is to keep these uh, files from getting super big, I would probably create different files for like, um, I would probably create different files for like brick and masonry, um, for different metals, um, for like tiles and other things like that, just to keep these files from getting massive. Because once you start bringing in the higher resolution textures, this can just get a little bit cumbersome. If you were interested, I can make a video on that. But that's basically how I would manage my materials inside of Blender. So I will link to some other tutorials about the Asset Browser and Blender 3.0 features on this page. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.